Hello and welcome back. I'm Alison Southern, the team vicar in the Oxygen Team Ministry, and this is our third journey of the Stations of the Cross in Holy Week. We're walking the way of Jesus, and this is the final part of that journey that we take as we walk towards Easter. It's the toughest part, the gruesome point at which Jesus is nailed to a cross, the pain that is almost unthinkable of nails breaking through flesh, muscle and bone. Many of us find it really, really difficult to engage with images that we find disturbing. How many of us turn our hearts off? close our eyes when we see images of people dying in famine situations, in refugee camps, in areas of life that we feel uncomfortable engaging with. As we journey through Holy Week, we cannot help but engage with the deaths that are happening around us due to coronavirus. The stories we hear, not just of strangers in distant places, not just of princes and prime ministers, but of people we know, members of our churches who are ill, people we know who have lost loved ones. The reality stares us in the face and we may want to turn our gaze away and yet we can't. So we continue our way of this journey to the cross with Jesus and as we continue and we hear of his story and we think of our world today and what's going on in it, I hope that we can hold fast with Jesus to gaze at the pain of what was happening then and what's happening now so that we might really be able to engage with what's happening, support one another, understand one another and be there as we come out the other side. The last station of the cross traditionally is the rolling away of the stone. The tomb is empty. We're going to leave that today and celebrate it on Easter Day. And I really do hope you join in that celebration because Easter Day is a day of hope. Easter Day is a day where the risen Christ offers for all of us a hope of the future with him. So Sunday morning will be joyous and celebratory, even in the midst of our pain, because actually in sadness there is joy and in scripture we are told that mourning will turn into dancing. As always with this images that you'll see. If you feel you want to pause on the segment, do please pause, spend time in prayer, gaze on the images. Allow yourself to be immersed in everything that happens on that journey. And we'll meet again and pray once we've walked to the cross. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Huge iron nails are hammered through his wrists and through his ankles. Iron through human flesh. The flesh must yield, there is no defence. Jesus nailed to the cross cannot move. The hand that has wiped blindness from the eyes. The hand that opened the seal of deafness. The hand that touched a heart and cured a leper. The hand that blessed children and those with a disability. The carpenter's hand is joined to the wood again 
as the cross is put in place. He hangs there between us and God, a blood-stained victim for love. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Jesus continues to be crucified in the ten children who die every minute of hunger in our world. He is crucified in all who are maimed, damaged and displaced because of war. He is crucified in all who are marginalised in our society because of their race, sexuality or gender. He is crucified in those who are abused physically, sexually or emotionally. He is crucified in those who are trafficked across the world. He is crucified in the exploitation of the earth and its resources. He is crucified by a pandemic that wreaks havoc across our world. Jesus, we pray on behalf of those who cannot reach out to you at this moment. We pray for all victims of violence, those who suffer it and those who inflict it. We pray especially for children, for the elderly and those too vulnerable to defend themselves. May victims of cruelty and oppression know that you are always with them. Jesus dies on the cross. As the life of Jesus ebbs away, his words are not of condemnation or of pity for himself, but of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the midst of his anguish and suffering, Jesus calls upon his Father to forgive those who are putting him to death. This is the real challenge of the cross. Forgiveness, even of those who hurt us most. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. There is so much to seek forgiveness for in our world today. Hunger, poverty, violence, abuse, war, neglect, corruption. The list seems endless. Each one of us praying these stations could continue the list on our own behalf. And indeed on behalf of those who have hurt us. As Jesus dies on Calvary, he challenges us to love our enemies, to let go of hurt, to ask for forgiveness. And when we cannot find it in our own hearts to forgive, to ask God to do it for us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do.
Let us stand with all who watched and prayed in silence while Jesus breathed his last. As we cannot measure love, so we cannot dilute this ultimate act of love and forgiveness with words. Let our love span the silence. Lord, let our love and forgiveness speak your praise. Jesus is taken down from the cross. Now Mary takes the broken body of her son in her arms. In her grief, she remembers the words of her son over the bread. This is my body, broken for you. And over the wine, this is my blood, poured out for you. She remembers that little baby in Bethlehem, worshipped by shepherds and kings. She remembers the days when the crowds followed him. And she is full of sorrow. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Mary's grief is our grief too. As Mary cradles the lifeless body of her son and offers him back to the Father, she stands with all parents who have held their children close to them in death. Those lost through accidents or acts of violence. Those who have died by suicide. Those who have died suddenly or after illness. Mary grieves with all who sorrow for loved ones, parents, siblings, family members, friends. Help us, Lord, to accept the partings that must come. Help us to offer our loved ones back to you as Mary offered her son. Faced with the silence of death, let us not despair but find hope. May the finality of death not oppress us. Help us to trust in you the Lord of the living and the dead. Help us to find hope in eternity with you. Jesus is laid in the tomb. That night, his body lay in the dark earth of the world a seed dying in the winter of all spirits. All those who had loved him felt emptied and exhausted. There seemed no longer any sense or purpose in anything. But at least no more harm could come to him. They closed the tomb and left. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We 
we name the crosses of today. There are times when we are overcome by the darkness of the tomb, by the countless deaths that we experience each day. But the answer to all our grieving and despair lies in this place. The world is now the dwelling place of God. The grain of wheat sown in darkness and in death has indeed yielded a rich harvest. Our presence here gives witness to that. Jesus' death was not in vain. Jesus, each day you put before us life or death. Help us always to choose life. We pray for all those we have known who have died and for those who have no one to pray for them. We ask for the gift of faith when we are faced with the darkness of the tomb and when our own death approaches. May we have eyes to see the promise of new life that the darkness can hold. The pain is clear for Jesus and yet the cry on the cross, Father forgive them, they know not what they do, is that powerful thing that breaks through my heart every single time I engage with it. That love beyond measure. Shall we pray? Loving God, this holy week we continue to bring your world to you in prayer. We still find ourselves amidst the, the anxiety, the fear, the unknown. Just as Jesus must have felt anxiety and fear And yet, Lord, we remember as he hung on that cross, his words were about forgiveness and the words around giving hope to all who gazed upon him. Lord, we pray for that same hope as we gaze upon Jesus. Help us to know that we do not walk alone. We pray for your strength, for your compassion, for your wisdom as we deal with a new world. There are so many different situations, Lord, not just with the coronavirus, but with wars, with drought, with famine. with violence in homes, in each and every situation, Lord, we know that you bring your light and your love to sustain us, to offer us hope and to show us a way of dealing with whatever is before us. So Lord, give us compassion. Give us patience. And help us not to be judgmental, but to be kind. Amen. Being kind to others and ourselves is a really important part of lockdown. So as we journey on towards Easter, I invite you to continue to join in around the vicarage table.
Tomorrow evening is Thursday and it's traditionally the day where we have foot washing services. It's a day where the Last Supper is remembered as people gather together and think about how Jesus gathered with his disciples, sharing food, washing feet, giving his disciples the words that they need to give them the strength to move through what was to come. So join us for that and then join us by the cross on Friday at two o'clock. But most of all, join us on Easter morning for a 10 o'clock celebration and communion service. Bring something to eat and drink and across the airwaves we will celebrate the greatest hope that we all have. Until then, bye for now.